And welcome back to Wilmington Area High School. We're here at halftime. It is Sharpsville 28, Wilmington 14. Hi again, everybody. Chad Krispinski, Ralph Sandy with you. Our halftime report is brought to you by MCCTC and by MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning. Ralph, let's take a look at our team numbers from the first half of play. What stands out to you? Passing numbers for Sharpsville, Colin Summers, and what he did, especially in that first quarter, was amazing. Also, you look at that rushing total for, for the Greyhounds. That's what they wanted to do, and they really established that there in the second quarter. The aforementioned Colin Summers putting on a show in the aerial attack. What impresses you about what he does with the football in his hands, he's a dual threat, and he showed that arm in the first half. Yeah, I think he does a nice job of making smart plays out there. When it's not there, he doesn't force it, and when it's there, boy, he puts it on the money. You can see he's very mobile in the pocket, throwing that one off his back foot to Jaden White, and that was his third touchdown in the first quarter. And then you see later in that second quarter, he's able to find somebody deep, and that's Kyle Vigotti for the touchdown. Our House 2 halftime highlights brought to you by MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning. Passing numbers look this way. Summers 9 for 15, 260 and four touchdowns. Buda Book did most of his damage in the ground attack. Ben Miller certainly springboarded this Wilmington team with a huge run. They balance it out. They spread it out, and Miller shined in that first half. Absolutely. He had the big run that got them on the board to kind of quiet down that Blue Devil offense, uh, but he just does a nice job of grinding it out on the offense. Here's his big run that gets him their first touchdown. You can just see a hard running style, and you know he shares that backfield with Miller and, and uh, Mikulin and Mitchell Tree, and they just really do a nice job. Rushing numbers look this way from the first half of play. Miller very efficient, that 80-yard touchdown run accounting for the bulk of his 100 yards on the ground, and Colin Summers did most of his damage through the air, as we just showed you. 42 yards on the ground, including a 19-yard scamper. And Summers didn't just do it all on the offensive side. He also got things done on the defensive side. Take a look at what Colin Summers was able to do. Right place, right time, and a heck of an effort picking off that pass. It all adds up to a 28-14 lead for Sharpsville over Wilmington. Here as we get you set for quarter number three. Let's check out some scores from around the valley, courtesy of Spitzer, Lordstown, and North Jackson. At Spitzer, our world revolves around you. Springfield leading Brookfield in the fourth quarter, 28-7. Hubbard blanking Greenville by a count of 27-0. That one has gone to quarter number three. In other action, Mansfield Senior leading Canfield, 14-7. That one's in the third quarter, and it is Gerard pounding Liberty, 35-7. That is at the half. All of our high school scores available on the WKBN app. Farrell with a 24-0 lead over Northeast. And Beaver Local with a 7-0 advantage over Salem at last check in the second quarter. Do yourself a favor, a QR code. Take full advantage of that. Download the WKBN app. With the very best high school football coverage, bar none, in the Valley. All right, Ralph, so here we go. It will be... Wilmington getting the football to start things here in the third quarter. What has to change for them to rally from this two-touchdown deficit? Well, I think it all surrounds their defense. This Greyhound defense is going to have to find a way to stop the arm of Colin Summers. And I think if they do that and they continue to establish that run game, they're going to have a chance in the fourth quarter, especially if they wear down that Blue Devil defense. But it all starts here on this drive. You know, they, they're getting the ball first here in the third quarter. Can they establish that run game? And it starts right here. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this third and fourth quarter here as we come to you live from New Wilmington, Pennsylvania on this Friday night, the first in the regular season here, the 2023 20, season in Western Pennsylvania. Mickill and Miller are back deep to return for Wilmington. Piccarelli has the ball teed up for Sharpsville, and in short order, we will be ready to go. Piccarelli makes the approach. He drives this kick. It's hauled in just across the 10 to the 15. Out across the 20. Up to the 25-yard line. Somebody lost a helmet. It's ahead to the 30 as a late flag comes flying in. And now a second one comes flying in. 
And we'll check in with Joe Lombardi, our referee. If Journey, Journey Cornelius almost in on the tackle with no helmet. That might be part of the issue here. Let's see if we can pick something out here. Maybe a face mask. There's the helmet is off. <laughs> Personal foul, 74 on Sharpsville. He lost his helmet and participated in the play and made the tackle. It's a 15-yard penalty, first down Wilmington. Well, coaches always say if you're going to make a mistake, make it aggressive. <laughs> They just want you to have that helmet on. That was, yep, that's something that could lead to a serious injury, but got to give Journey Cornelius an A for effort there, right? Absolutely. He did not give up on the play. Yeah, sophomore out there wanting to make a name for himself. And, and he did. Yeah, we've mentioned it a few times. Yeah. <laughs> so they'll march the ball ahead and spot it at the 45 of Wilmington. Buda Book. Straight up the middle. Book back to the inside. He got decked. But he's all the way down to the 41-yard line. Big chunk. And a first down for Wilmington. Well, I like the play design that time. We didn't see that at all in that first half. The play fake in the backfield kind of hides that ball for a minute. Kind of a draw in a sense. Runs it right up the middle. First down and 10 for the Greyhounds from the Sharpsville 41-yard line. McKillen on the left side, Miller on the right. And the give is straight up the middle. This is Miller! Miller powering his way inside the 15-yard line. A late flag comes flying in, but Wilmington has reached the BNR wholesale tire and wheel red zone. You're going to add some yardage, too, with the face mask at the end, but this is what they wanted to do. They want to dominate up front. You see those linemen blocking 10 yards down the field. You see the speed of Miller. He showed it to you earlier in the game. Nice little stop-and-go move right there. And hard to see the... The face mask, but I think they got it for sure there at the end. And the face mask, as you said, we'll get a look at it here probably. First yeah, there, there you go. Plain as day, good call. Aiden Pushkar, the, the one that got the penalty there for the Blue Devils. But the Greyhounds set up nicely. Buddha Buck. Takes the snap. And he bounces it to the outside. Reverses his tracks. Trying to cut the corner. And Buddha Buck races in for the touchdown. Well, that's not how you drew it up, nope. but that's how you get it into the end zone, and that's what an athlete like Buddha Book could do out there. That play is totally designed for him to go left. No running room out there. Gets swung around by Kevin McCullough, and really gets swung right into the end zone. Picks up a nice block by Ben Miller. Five-yard touchdown run, and it's 28-20. Winters on for the extra point. Snap back, ball down, the kick is up, and the kick is good. 10.53 left to play here in the third quarter. It is now Sharpsville 28, Wilmington 21. We'll bring you back after this on the WKBN High School Football Game of the Week. Bombers National Bank, rock solid. You've always imagined yourself behind the wheel of a Cadillac. At Stadium Cadillac in Salem, we offer the largest selection of certified pre-owned Cadillacs in the area. Find the Cadillac you've been dreaming of, where the customer is king. Just a short drive from anywhere or online at StadiumCadillac.com. Whether it's a sedan or SUV, we have the certified pre-owned Cadillac for you. Locally owned Stadium Cadillac in Salem, Ohio. Make your dream a reality. 
or view all the great selection at StadiumCadillac.com. At Axio Fitness, everybody gets the personal attention they need to see results. I'm Nancy, and I'm an Axio Fitness client. I'm Bob, and I'm an Axio Fitness client. This is Jerry, and she's an Axio Fitness client. I'm Dre, and I'm an Axio Fitness client. I'm Alan, and I'm an Axio Fitness client. I'm Saki, and I'm an Axio Fitness client. Axio Fitness, come be our next success story. For almost 70 years, Gold Heating and Cooling's legacy has grown across our entire valley. Today, our growing team serves Trumbull, Mahoning, Columbiana, and the Shenango Valley, but we remain true to our core values. From our in-house dedicated dispatch team, installation and service crews, to our fine craftsmanship and our sheet metal fabrication shop. Our entire staff is ready to serve you. And we always have a truck right down the road from you. Galt Heating and Cooling, from our family to yours. Go with Galt! The Honda Store in Boardman would like to wish both teams good luck in tonight's game. Looking for a new car, truck, or SUV? Come to the Honda Store and see why you should be driving a Honda. And welcome back. 10.53 left to play. Here in the third quarter, Sharpsville with a seven-point lead, 28-21, as we welcome you back. Chad Krispinski, Ralph Sandy with you. Mission accomplished. Wilmington on their initial possession. Of this second half. Number three, Kyle Making a statement. And I promise you at halftime, the second part of that equation was, let's get a stop at our first defensive opportunity, and it's going to come right now. So Winters has the ball. Teed up. But he makes the approach and drills this one. Dalton Byerly has it at the one. Out across the five. 10, 15, 20, 25. Not across the 25 to the 29 yard line. It's a good return for Byerly, who's done a lot tonight. Danny Leonard was there to make the tackle. But Wilmington getting it done. Buda Book, a big part of that success on the first drive. Yeah, did a nice job uh, at the quarterback position, really directing this offense, running the ball. And boy, it's, it's a big help when you have a guy like Ben Miller back there making big plays. But again, the athleticism of Book on that touchdown play turned a play that was headed for nothing into a touchdown. First and 10 from the 29-yard line. Colin Summers, high snap, will call his own number, and he falls forward across the 30 up to the 31-yard line. And a late flag comes flying in. Things are getting a little bit chippy now. Dead ball. Personal foul. 55 Sharpsville. That's Kevin McCullough called for the personal foul. Well, you hate to see that because you get a pretty good gain there on first down. So they'll march off the personal foul. Hey, but if you're the Greyhounds, that's exactly what you want. You want a negative play. You want to continue to go out there and play tough defense and certainly a big penalty like that helps. So second down and long. They'll mark the ball back at the 16 yard line. Second down and 23. Three wide receivers set. Colin Summers looking as all kinds of time. Wheel route. It is knocked away and complete. Intended for Kyle Vigotti. Aiden Garner does a nice job. The linebacker has the back in coverage. Follows him the whole way, step for step. Puts his hand up. and Really, that hand is the thing that knocks that ball away. Because that's a pretty on-target pass by Colin Summers. So, nice job defensively by Gardner. Third down and 23. From the 16-yard line. 10-12 to play early on in this third quarter. Summers looking all kinds of time. Summers 
Still looking downfield, he heaves it, and it is incomplete! Intended for Aiden Pushkar, back in coverage for Wilmington, it was Freddie Zantner. Boy, Colin Zentner gives you, I mean, Colin Summer does everything he can to extend that play. And we'll see Zentner come over, just get a hand on it to knock it away. And it'll be fourth and 23, and how big does that penalty loom earlier on this drive? Back deep to return. Twin return men, the punt from Noah Ashey. It's Buda Book among those set to return. The punt is away. It'll hit and be picked up at the 43 across the 45. And up near the 50 yard line goes Ben Miller. And that is where Wilmington will have it first down and 10. The area's best football players are part of WKBN's Big 22. The Big 22 is sponsored by RD Construction and by Fred Martin Ford, where they sell for less, a lot less. Go to WKBN.com and click on sports to see the top high school football players from the Valley. 9.52 left to play. Third quarter, 28-21. Sharpsville led this football game 21-0 at one point. It's been back and forth since that point. McGillen is a running back. Miller is a running back. Book directing things for the Greyhounds. They have a whistle and a timeout taken by Wilmington with 9.52 to play. Third quarter. We'll take it as well in the WKBN High School Football Game of the Week. These furniture, appliances, and mattresses. The best things in life happen at home. Looking to sell your home? Call Classic Real Estate for hometown service, values, and expertise. Locally owned since 1969. Sell your home fast. Call Classic Real Estate at 330-757-8855. Do you remember to pack everything I asked you to? Mm-hmm. Hey, don't forget you're going to be my co-pilot this entire ride. Don't worry, I gotcha. Mm-hmm. Hey, aren't we supposed to exit at... <laughs> I knew it. Directions to Lake Milton. Our beards are big, your worries stay small. You keep seeing their trucks around town. Find out why so many trust the Beard when it's time to move. Bearded Brothers Moving Group prides themselves on the excellent care they take with each and every customer's belongings. They know that moving's a hassle, so they do the work for you. Trust the local, family-oriented company with deep roots in the community that is always looking to give back. Bearded Brothers Moving Group. Request a quote today. Good luck to all the high school football teams this year. The Moransky Companies are proud sponsors of the Five Blocks of Granite and salute all area high school athletes throughout the year. Looking to sell your home? Call Classic Real Estate for hometown service, values, and expertise. Locally owned since 1969. Sell your home fast. Call Classic Real Estate at 330-757-8855. Nine fifty-two to play in the third quarter. Twenty-eight, twenty-one. Sharpsville leading Wilmington, but the Greyhounds with the ball and on the move, trying to tie this thing up. They'll toss it up the middle. Big, strong, hard running inside the forty-five, down to the forty-four of Sharpsville. McKillen getting the carry that time. We get a pretty good lane for him to to run through. I mean, a good gain on first down of five yards with a good push up front. Carter Horkovi leading the way there at the center position. Once again, it is Mikulin, and he muscles his way forward down to the 40-yard line. He's a little bit shy. Of a Wilmington first down, about a yard shy, it'll set up third and one. 
And Kevin McCullough makes a nice play defensively from that end position. But as we've seen all night, it seems like all of these Greyhound backs are always falling forward. You know, they're always getting that extra yard or two, which sets them up nicely here for a third and one. From the 40-yard line, Book. Back up under center. Book calls his own number and pushes the pile and gets more than enough for a Wilmington first down. You know, I thought at a third, certain point in that second quarter, I felt like that Wilmington offensive line was starting to take control. It looked like that Sharpsville defense was a little bit tired. And with another, you know, sustained drive right here, I think they can get back to that. And if you're the Greyhound coaches and players, that's exactly what you want here midway through the third quarter. First and 10, they mark the ball down at the 35 of Sharpsville. Book tosses. This is Miller again, finding an opening. A convoy of blockers, and Miller cuts it back across the field, and he's in. Touchdown! 35-yard touchdown run. Miller strikes again. <laughs> Watch the block by Jacob Coulter, number 74, just to seal that end of Adam Spaulding. And then the rest is all Ben Miller. You can see Ben Miller cramping up right now. <laughs> but not before he gets to that end zone. Winters on for the all-important extra point. Snap back, ball down, kick up, and the kick is good! 7.48 left to play in the third quarter, and this one is tied at 28. What a ball game this has been, Ralph. Yeah, just back and forth, you know, certain points. Sharpsville looks unstoppable. At certain points, <laughs> Wilmington looks unstoppable. And, you know, there you see him getting worked on. It looked like he was cramping up when he was in the end zone. Well, we knew what the two contrasting styles were as you look at Miller's night, and it's not yet done by any stretch of the imagination. We talked about at halftime and during our keys to the game before the game. Sharpsville looking to score quickly. Wilmington looking to grind it out, run that clock. Given where we are in the game, who does this favor now given what the score is? Well, I think if, if Wilmington continue to, you know, use this run game, I think it certainly benefits them. I think they're wearing down Sharpsville, and it's going to be up to Sharpsville here on this offensive possession to kind of reestablish that line of scrimmage to get that fast-paced offense going again. But again, week one, most of these players playing both ways. You know, fatigue, even though the weather's not scorching hot out there, certainly going to play a factor for somebody. So Winters has the ball teed up. Bugatti and Byerly are back deep to return for Sharpsville. You know, it's crazy to think this game was 21-0. Yeah. Right off the bat, you start thinking, wow, running clock, what's going to happen here tonight? And boy, we find ourselves in the middle of a great ball game. High twirling kick, which angles and will go out of bounds. Seemed like three of those tonight. So we'll see what Sharpsville likes to do. Out of bounds, Wilmington. Sharps elected to take it on the 35-yard line. First down, Sharpsville. So Blue Devil football at the 35. It seemed like in the first half, anytime Wilmington got something going, they were able to find the end zone. Sharpsville was able to bounce back. It hasn't been easy for the Blue Devils in this third quarter, that's for sure. No, they did a nice job bouncing back there late in the second quarter. They're going to have to do so again right here if they want to stay in this ball game. Officials time out here for something. All right, so here we go. First and 10 from the 35-yard line. 7.48 to play, third quarter. Colin Summers takes the snap. He now rolls to the far side. He throws on the run. It is caught 
across the 40 up to the 43 yard line. The big night for Dalton Byerly continues. Well, and it's not surprising they go to Byerly right here. He has been the spark plug for this offense all night when they've needed a big play. He has provided it. And now they just need to get on track and they go right back to him. Second down, Charlottesville. Second and short, second and two from the 43 yard line of the Blue Devils. Byerly seven catches and counting. Up the middle, Summers blasts his way. Open field, he got dumped. Buda Buck laid him out. We've an injured Wilmington Greyhound on his back. Looks like cramping is happening for him as well. Yeah, Colin Summer, who we know could do it with his feet as well, takes a big hit at the end. But again, you go back to the basics. You go back to the quarterback run. You go back to throwing the ball to Dalton Byerly to get this offense reestablished, to get them back in their rhythm. And you see Summer's numbers here tonight through three quarters just a amazing so like video game numbers he's cool calm collected but he finds his team tied up at 28 a little over halfway through this third quarter so we're in an injury timeout now for cramping it's Tough to see exactly who that is down in any event. If you're just joining us, we'll show you how you got to this point. Started early. Byerly and Summers connecting with regularity. This one was a 51-yard touchdown pass. A short time later, 56-yard touchdown pass. That made it 14-0. Then off his back foot, Summers connects with Jaden White. He's in for his score. It's 21-0. That's when Wilmington got things going. 80-yard scoring scamper by Ben Miller that cut the deficit to 21-7. And then Buda Book scampered around the right side, and he found the end zone to cut it to 21-14. Kyle Vigotti hauled that one in wide open, and then Book back to work. Raced around in the opposite direction. He's in. And then Ben Miller. 35-yard touchdown run that tied the ball game up at 28. First and 10 for Sharpsville at the Wilmington 45-yard line. That's Mikulin. It had to have some assistance. Colin Summers stops, throws, deep downfield and incomplete. Pass was intended for Dalton Byerly, why not? Seven catches and counting. Yeah, he's approaching 200 yards receiving on the night. He was featured at halftime as well, talking about making big plays, and he certainly has had his fair share here tonight. Second and 10 from the 45-yard line. Sharpsville will send out three wide receivers near side to the right. One far side to the left. One back in the backfield as Summers will go back to the air. He steps up. He's flushed. Still looking downfield. Gives it the heave towards the end zone. Incomplete. Intended for Calvin McCullough. And another flag has been thrown. Intended for number two, Calvin McCullough. You know, we haven't seen Jaden White. You know, he, he had an impact on this game on both sides of the football early on. And I think he's been absent from this lineup here in the second half. Continue to keep an eye out there for number six. And we'll see what this penalty is as well. Illegal formation, Sharpsville. Penalties decline, third down. So the legal formation is the call. It'll be third and 10. And in situations like this all night, you've seen the Blue Devils go to Dalton Byerly. So I'd pay close attention to him on the outside as he is Colin Summers' favorite target. Also keep in mind that Colin Summers has had success running for first downs here tonight as well. 
Third and 10 from the 45. Summers dumps it off to the near side, complete to McCullough. McCullough slices up the field, and McCullough is down inside the 35-yard line. Football may have come loose, and now we'll unpile things and see where they stand. It will be a first down for Sharpsville when it's all said and done. Yeah, Calvin McCullough definitely fumbles this ball. I saw the beanbag come out. Nice little juke move as soon as he gets it. There's the ball coming out. And boy, he's fortunate he falls right on top of it and picks up that first down. Carter Horkovi knocked that ball free. But Sharpsville hangs on to the football. First and 10 from the 34. Up the middle, Summers. Fake the handoff to Bugatti. It was kind of a delayed. Yeah, this just didn't look smooth there. No. That, that that mesh point they call it between the quarterback and the running back. You could just see. Not sure who was going to take it. Wasn't hiding the ball well and just gets what he can. Colin Summers does up the middle for a gain of about only a yard. Second and nine in a 28 28 game. Byer Lee and McFeeters far side to the left. Pushkar and McCullough near side to the right. One back in the backfield. Summers looks to throw. He fires deep down the left side and it's incomplete. There was contact, but no flag. It does not appear and another injured Wilmington Greyhound across the way. Yeah, it looks like Freddie Zender running step for step with him. Doesn't look like any pushing or shoving. Looks like pretty good coverage by Zentner. Then you see the cramp after the after he hits the ground. Now a third and nine at Sharpsville again with another third and long. We're able to convert the last time with that screen pass to Calvin McCullough. And you know both coaches are preaching on the sidelines. Start drinking. So 5.53 left in the third. 28 all is our score. WKBN's Big 22 includes the five blocks of granite, which honors the top high school football lineman in the Valley. It's sponsored by the Moransky Companies, Coca's Pizza, and by BCI Granite. Go to WKBN.com and click on sports. See the top high school football players from the Valley. Of course, both of these programs have been well represented over the years on the Big 22 and also the five blocks of granite at one point in time or another. So it's third down and nine upcoming for Sharpsville. And you would think at third and nine at this point of the field, if they got maybe half of that, they would consider going for it on fourth. And the hard count's going to get him half of that right there. A veteran quarterback. Dead ball. Encroachment. Wilmington, number 71. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. Carter Horkovi jumped well, they, across. Well, they call it on Carter Horkovi. So did a they, few others. Yeah. <laughs> He's probably like, why me? I mean, like four other guys jumped across. So that'll make it third down and four. Kyle Vagotti in the backfield to the right of Summers. Summers takes the snap, looking to throw, lets it rip, and it is incomplete intended for Hayden McFeeters. He was wide open. Would have had more than enough for a first down. It's now fourth and four. Do you go here, Ralph? Yeah, I think you do. I mean, you need a boost. I mean, you're with, a, with that penalty. You're only at a fourth and four have that veteran quarterback there we talked about calling summers all night long and they had a good play call right there the tight end sitting right in the middle of the field one of the few bad passes we've seen Colin summers throw here tonight fourth and four from the 28 big play here in the third quarter in a 28 28 game Colin Summers dumps it off. It is caught. Vergotti has it. Cuts it back inside. And Vergotti is wrestled down inside the 10-yard line as Sharpsville has reached the
the BNR Wholesale Tire and Wheel Red Zone. Boy, Vigotti is fired up, and rightly so. You see him come right out of the backfield. No linebacker picks him up. Picks up the first down and a lot more and extends this drive. And so it is first and goal at the nine yard line for the Sharpsville Blue Devils. Summers awaits the snap. He has it. He's looking. He's flushed. He dumps it off and it's incomplete off the fingertips of Calvin McCullough. Yeah, that time Summers throws the fastball and probably all he needed was the change up as he had Calvin McCullough coming across the field. So that will set up second down and goal from the nine. And you could tell that Greyhound defense playing special attention to Dalton Byerly there on the other side. And rightly so. The plot thickens with 5-11 to play third quarter. Bugatti is to the right of Summers. In motion comes Dalton Byerly. Summers takes the snap, fires, and it is caught! Touchdown, Byerly! Nine-yard touchdown pass to Dalton Byerly, and Sharpsville recaptures the lead. Well, you look at Carter Horkovi, he almost had a, an easy interception, or at the very least knocked that ball down, but it goes right between his arm and his helmet, right into the hands of that guy. Now has seen the end zone three times here tonight. Yeah, those numbers just continue to keep piling up. Extra point is up and it is good by Piccarelli. 5.07 to play here in the third quarter. It is now 35-28. Sharpsville did exactly what it needed to answering back. Well, the Greyhounds had their opportunities, but those big fourth down and third down conversions definitely cost them. Scores from around the valley, courtesy of Spitzer Lordstown in North Jackson. It's Spitzer, our world revolves around you. Springfield blasts Brookfield 42-7 the final. Poland with a 41-0 lead over Howland in the third quarter. In other action throughout the valley tonight, Hubbard blanking Greenville 35-0. That's in the fourth quarter. Gerard pasting Liberty 49-7 in the third quarter in that one. Green with a one touchdown lead over South Range. That game has gone to the third quarter at West Branch with a two touchdown advantage over Woodridge at last check. That one likewise in quarter number three. That QR code on the left-hand side of your screen will get you exactly what you need for high school football scores, highlights, and complete coverage. The best anywhere, bar none. Download the WKBN mobile app today. Number 26, Benjamin Miller, number 29, Tyler. So Sharpsville has recaptured the lead 35 28. And now the onus is on Wilmington to try and answer back. Ryland Piccarelli. Short kick. That's angled. It will hit and be picked up at the eight yard line. Back across the field, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, and across the 40 and ahead to the 43 yard line. That's Mickelin on the return, and that's going to set things up very nicely for the Greyhounds. Boy, and that was a little scary. You see that ball rolling on the turf, not sure if he was going to pick it up in time, not only does so, but stretches it all the way across the field, picks up a couple blocks, and a lot of green out in front of him. Aiden Pushkar finally bringing him down. So Buda Buck, the Wilmington starting quarterback, leads the offense back to the line of scrimmage. Book looks things over, brings a man in motion, and Book will toss it to the near side. This is Miller. Ahead to the 48-yard line, brought down on the play by Kevin McCullough of Sharpsville. Wilmington 
slow and methodical as they said they would be on the offensive end. And it has worked here tonight despite a slow start. Book again, tosses, this is Miller rumbling his way and he has enough for a Greyhounds first down. You know, a lot of misdirection in the backfield, but at the end of the day, it's that offensive line pushing and those running backs running hard. So they mark the ball at the Sharpsville 45-yard line. I look down there and I see a few Blue Devils with their hands on hips. You mentioned the fatigue factor. Will that show up in the final quarter and a half or a little less than that? This is Mikulin blasting his way up the middle of the field and he's spun down at the 36 of Sharpsville. You know, we talk about physical ball games all the time and you know week one you want to see what your team's made of and I think both of these teams really answer the bell as far as the physical aspect of this game a lot of hard run and hard tackling. Three nineteen, rolling third quarter clock. Wilmington a hair shy of a first down. It's second down in less than a yard. We've seen Buddha Book take this up the middle on a few occasions on short yardage. Book fakes the handoff. He calls his own number. Has the corner. There's a flag that came from right behind as he did cut that corner. And let's see if that will make things more dramatic for Wilmington here on this possession. Yeah, usually that's an area where you're going to see a hold on the offense, which is going to turn a, a second and short into a second and long. Holding. Wilmington. Number two. Ten-yard penalty from the spot. Second down. That's Aiden Gardner. Called for the hold. So they march the ball back to the 45 of Sharpsville. It'll be second down and 10. That changes the complexion of things. Yeah, that's a killer. You like the aspect of Buda Book running the ball, especially here in the second half. Inside of three minutes left to play, third quarter. 35 28 is our score. Book gives near side this is Miller spinning his way free rumbling his way down to the 32 yard line and he is going to have enough for a Greyhound first down as we have another Greyhound down and cramping up but Miller has been impressive you know we know he's banked up cramped up already once tonight after that touchdown run but continues to run hard and where he carries Dalton Byerly with him for a couple yards there at the end. So 2.35 left. The ball is marked at the 32-yard line. It will be first down and 10 for the Greyhounds when we get back to it. Sharpsville snapped a nine-game losing streak in the head-to-head -head series. Picking up a win. Last year, and they'd love nothing more than to make it too straight, but Wilmington has had this one circled all offseason. It's been a huge source of motivation, knowing not only it was week one here this particular night, but likewise, when you have a region game right from the get-go, that ramps up those off-season workouts, does it not? Oh, absolutely. You know, you have something to look forward to, and you know you get it right out of the gate, and Obviously, with that loss last year, you want to prove yourself, and you get that opportunity to prove yourself week one. There's see Aiden Gardner, the one cramping up. We've called his name on the defensive side of the ball more than a few times here tonight. First down and 10. Miller lines up in a wing on the right side. Mick on a wing on the left side. Miller comes in motion. Book fakes the handoff, keeps it himself, lowers the shoulder, and got knocked out of bounds. 
See where they knocked him out at about the 26 or so. Boy, and you love this aspect to that offense here tonight, and I think you've seen it more late in that second into the second half. You know, Buda Book running this football really, I think, opens up this offense so you're not just focused on Miller and Mikulin out of the backfield. Second down and four from the 26-yard line. More movement and another flag as those penalty markers are really piling up now. Flag on the play. Dead ball. Encroachment. Number 55, Sharpsville. Five-yard penalty. First down. Kevin McCullough called for encroachment. So that'll give the Greyhounds a first down. Coach Picker really will not be happy with those six penalties here tonight. Buda Book brings a man in motion. He gives it to Mikulin, who races up the field. Mikulin refusing to go down, and he blasts his way inside the 10-yard line. Oh, and he took a hard hit at the end. I, they got to let him recover before they lift him up. Wilmington has reached the BNR wholesale tire and wheel red zone. We'll get another look at it here. That's why it looked like Summers and McCullough both hit him at the same time towards the end of that run. A great run. And he looks a little groggy. Slowly making his way. Off the field under his own power. Aiden Gardner has checked back in after he was cramping up a short time ago. So here we go. First and goal from the four. Buddha Book brings a man in motion and he turns and he gives. It's a run play right side touchdown. Chase Mitchell Tree. Wilmington to within an extra point of tying this thing up. Mitchell Tree, not a lot of carries here tonight. A fresh set of legs. Gets a good block out front by Rocky Serafino and gets in the end zone. And just like a heavyweight title fight, we're just answer, 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 back and forth. 35-34 is our score. Wilmington short a player there on the extra point attempt. Here they come. Michael Mistretta late getting in. The extra point try by James Winters is up and it is no good. 140 left to play here in the third quarter. Talk about the importance of special teams. 35-34 is what our score remains. Yeah, we talked about the keys to the game. The fact that it was number three key, limit mistakes. And then you're going to see the extra point just barely miss. Let's see it go wide right. And that will certainly play a factor down the stretch. Following tonight's action, we will select a player of the game. It's one player that has made the greatest impact during our game of the week. Our player of the game award is sponsored by our good friends at Nightline Embroidery and Screen Printing and Stadium GM. Chad Krispinski, Rob Sandy with you. It's been an entertaining game. We've had plenty of points. We've had plenty of big plays. And we're still not done. And we're still in the third quarter, surprisingly. Yeah, between the penalties, the cramps, the scoring. A lot going on here tonight and a lot going on on the scoreboard as well. 
So Winters has the ball teed up. Winters makes the approach. Line drive kick, which is taken by Byerly across the 15. He's ahead of the 20, trying to find an opening, and he pushes his way up across the 25, ahead of the 26-yard line. So, 134 left to play, third quarter. Tackled by number 71, Carter Horkoon. First and 10 for Colin Summers. The Sharpsville Blue Devils. Summers has been tremendous here tonight on both sides of the ball, really. From the 25-yard line. Bugatti is to the left of Summers. Summers will look to go to the air. Summers all kinds of time. Fires knocked away, incomplete. Pass was intended for Hayden McFeeters and another flag in. Number five, Tom Summers pass incomplete. Flag on the play. It looks like it's going to be a hold against Sharpsville, which will probably be declined. Sharpsville. Holding. Sharpsville. Number 52. 10 yard penalty. Repeat first down. The Blue Devils will be backed up. So first and 20 now from the 15-yard line. Summers back to throw again. He'll fire deep down the left side, incomplete. Closest player to the football was Freddie Zahentner. Well, you could just tell looking at the body language and the players are even running their routes and on defense. This is an exhausted group of players out there really on both sides of the football. Second down and 20 for Sharpsville. Colin Summers back to throw. He'll go back to the air, firing deep down the left side, incomplete. Third and 20 upcoming. Number five, Colin Summers pass, incomplete. See Calvin McCullough, who was the intended target on that play, cramping up at the end of it. Number 17, Curtis Hefner on the coverage. Down on four. So third and 20. And this is a long game, is it not? Yeah, absolutely, and I mean, uh, we got a long way to go. And these players are already exhausted. And now a third and 20. You've seen him go deep there on first and second down. You have no choice here on third. Summers. Looking to the near side, looking to the far side. Summers steps up out of trouble. And Summers looking to fire downfield. He will run. He's to the 25. He's to the 30. And he muscles his way up across the 30 ahead of the 33-yard line. He is shy of a first down. Not by a lot. Just a little. Can't imagine they would be aggressive and go for it here. But you never know. I mean, I... I I wouldn't hesitate to send him out there and do another hard count, see if you get a free one. So they're going to mark the ball at the 34-yard line. It's a yard shy of a first down. 35 seconds left to play in this third quarter in a winding clock. See if they can get them to jump or if they will snap the football. Well, uh, they jumped. Sharpsville jumped. It looked like number six. The number 50 up front, maybe. Josh Myers could have been Brian White as well. 
So that'll make it fourth down and six. I would imagine the punt team would come out here, I would think, but again, you never know. The sport of football has changed in terms of coaches being really aggressive. Analytics driven. At least at the moment, the offense is out there. Colin Summers back to throw. Summers is dropped. The football came out. They will say he was down by contact. That's a big time play here late in the third quarter. Well, it looked like he wanted to go quickly to Kyle Vagotti on that swing pass. Vagotti wasn't looking, nowhere to go. He just decides to tuck it and run it. And then he just throws the ball up there at the end to hope for a miracle, but his knee was down. And the Greyhounds are going to take over with great field position still in the third quarter. 35-34, Wilmington football with 2.8 seconds left. Buda Book under center brings a man in motion, calls his own number, and he will reverse his tracks, and he is down for a loss on the play. Three quarters in the books, 35 34 in favor of Sharpsville on the WKBN High School Football Team of the Week. The best used cars in the valley at stadiumgm.com. I'm Wendy Perez. When you work with the Wendy Perez team, we guarantee you exceptional service, second to none. We have the key to your next home. Call Wendy Perez, new brokerage, same great service. Attention high school sophomores. Now is the time to enroll at the Mahoning County Career and Technical Center. At MCCTC, we do things differently. We approach learning in the new school, hands-on, real-world way so that you are prepared not just for the jobs of today, but for the jobs of the future. We inspire innovation and collaboration in our more than 20 high-tech labs. Visit MahoningCTC.com and book a tour with me today. We can't wait to meet you. Here at BNR Wholesale Tire and Wheel, you just stop in and leave $49 down. You pick them out and drive them out the same day. BNR Wholesale Tire, we're known by the money you keep. Here at BNR Wholesale Tire and Wheel, we have 17 inch painted custom wheels for your car, starting as low as $139.95 each. BNR Wholesale Tire, we're known by the money you keep. Find new roads to savings at the Stadium Superstore, the only place where you'll find every GM brand. Chevy, Buick, GMC, and Cadillac all under one roof. Visit StadiumGM.com right now. Search through our massive new and used car inventory and find the perfect make and model to fit your needs. Value your trade and get pre-approved online. You'll find out why nobody beats a stadium deal. We offer pickup and delivery for service as well. It's the Stadium Superstore at StadiumGM.com. I'm Wendy Perez. When you work with the Wendy Perez team, we guarantee you exceptional service, second to none. We have the key to your next home. Call Wendy Perez, new brokerage, same great service. 12 minutes to play, what a ball game it has been. Sharpsville 35, Wilmington 34, Greyhound football. And Book is decked at the 40 yard line. Swarmed upon there by Vigotti and Adam Spaulding. And it's a big time loss in that Sharpsville defense has stepped up the last two plays. Yeah, two negative plays in a row. Nobody fooled by the play fake. Adam Spaulding does a great job of hanging on. And we see Cal Vigotti deliver the blow there at the end. Third down and 25. Haven't seen Buda Book throw the ball much here tonight, but a third and 25. We'll see what they have in the playbook here. Buda Book. 
Brings Miller in motion. It's a run play that goes up the middle and does not go for much. Clogging things up in a big, big way. T.J. Locklear, the big fella. They may give him a yard on the play. It's fourth and 24. Now the field possession, field position game that is, comes into effect now. As it looks like Wilmington will send out the punt group. As expected. Byerly back deep to return the kick. The punt is away. It's a wobbly kick, which is muffed. It is loose, and the Greyhounds trying to pounce on it. They'll uncover the pile, and it'll belong to Sharpsville. Wow! Boy, they had an opportunity right there. As you watch this ball bounce around on the ground. Freddie Zentner right there, the first shot at it. That's a great shot at it, too. My, oh, my. That was Willie Moore with the shot. and Boy, a missed opportunity right there. 10-11 left. Off the fingertips it was of Calvin McCullough. And they'll mark the ball at the nine-yard line. First down and 10 for Sharpsville. How aggressive will the Blue Devils be? Or will they work on the ground attack and run some clock? Run play goes to McCullough right away. And not much running room at all. Maybe a yard. Hey, keep in mind, McCullough was just cramping up on that last, last offensive series. And number 68, Rocky Serafina. But I think at this point, you're really running out of bodies out there. Fresh legs for sure. Second down and nine. They mark the ball at the 10-yard line. Aiden Pushkar lined up as one wide receiver near side to the left. Colin Summers brings Pushkar in motion. Summers fakes the handoff, steps up, and throws incomplete. In the vicinity was Hayden McFeeters, and it's third and nine. When McFeeters and, and Summers really haven't been able to connect here tonight, there's been some opportunities for the, for the two to make some plays, just not on the same page. Quarterback tight end, and you know, usually historically that tight end is your security blanket there in the middle of the field. Third down and nine with 9.39 left to play in the ball game. Bugatti is the running back. Pushkar comes in motion. Summers to throw. Summers out of trouble. Summers turns on the Jets. He's to the 15. First down 20. Colin Summers up across the 30 near the 35 yard line. Head coach Paul Piccarelli told me this week he has the freedom to tuck it and go at any point. Boy, he picked a good time to do that he, there. He didn't even have much choice. Nothing down the field open. And again, you go with your senior leader there at the quarterback position. Gets a nice block there at the first down marker. And a big gain on third and long. 23-yard run for Colin Summers. And he continues to pile up the numbers tonight. Summers will turn and give. That run play was blown up as soon as the handoff was made. Willie Moore, Aiden Gardner both there to make that stop in the middle of that Greyhound defense. And you talked about it. Calvagati looking for somewhere to run, and there is nowhere. No gain on the play. Second down and 10. Timeout situation, you can see at the bottom of the screen, Wilmington with two, Sharpsville with three. Not that that's a factor just yet, but something to keep in mind as we progress through this fourth quarter. 
One point ball game, Sharpsville up 35-34 on Wilmington. Well, Sharpsville has to use one of those timeouts right there. Speaking of which, timeout on the field. 8.39 to play in the fourth quarter. It's a one point ball game on the WKBM High School Football Game of the Week. These furniture, appliances, and mattresses. The best things in life happen at home. We're going on a trip. What are you talking about, Popeye? Lito, that guy in the cape says we gotta move all these Fords, so we're going somewhere. That was Ford Man saying that here at Loud Motors Ford, we gotta sell all these new vehicles. So we're offering discounts up to $5,000, as well as available 0% financing. That's right, Lito. We're really pushing to get them to drive out here to Minerva and move all these Fords this month. Hey, what did I miss? We're moving Fords. Which means we're going on a trip. Oh, I gotta go pack. Pack what? He always wears the same thing. Right? If you want to pay less, you have to come see us. Right here at Loud Motors Ford. We went and we checked with individuals that used R&D construction, and they all were very pleased with the quality of his work. They put 43 square of shingle on my roof. That was a complete tear-off and replacement in two days. Randy recommended a certain roof pattern for us that we weren't even considering. We used that shingle on our house, and we, we were thrilled with it. We never would have chosen that shingle. It really pops on our roof. We were very impressed with his vision. We were very impressed with his professionalism. It was perfect. We love it. I would recommend him to anyone. For the best pizza in Youngstown, visit Avalon Downtown Pizzeria. Come try our boutique-style pizza where our dough is made fresh daily and always from scratch. Free local deliveries downtown and call ahead for other delivery options. Our carryout window is now open Friday and Saturday from midnight to 2 a.m. Online ordering now available on AvalonDowntown.com. Family owned and operated with generations of tradition baked into every pie. Avalon Downtown Pizzeria on Federal Street. Congratulations to Jerry Ricciuti, member of the 2023 Youngstown Press Club Hall of Fame. Eight thirty-nine left to play here in the ball game. A great one brewing here in Week One in Pennsylvania. Of course, Ohio action got underway one week ago, so two weeks will be in the books for local teams in the Buckeye State. But what a way to! Kick things off in PA here. Sharpsville with a one-point lead over Wilmington as we welcome you back. Chad Krispinski, Ralph Sandy with you. Colin Summers back to throw. He dumps it off. Fagotti makes the catch. Puts his head down. Powers his way up near the sticks. And that's the exact play they wanted to run on fourth down, down at the other end at the end of that third quarter. And you can see how wide open it is. Really nobody going with the back out of the backfield. Able to turn it up, get a good chunk of yards, and almost picks up that first down. Third one, We're down in a long one for the Blue Devils. Three wide receivers set. Colin Summers will turn and give to Vagotti, and he somehow slithered his way through a tackle. And he squirted and just got enough for the first down. That's a yeah. big first down there. Absolutely. Really nowhere to run. You see the defense converging on him. He's able to break that first arm tackle of Jacob Coulter and really just fall forward enough for that first down. From the 44-yard line. Colin Summers brings... Pushkar in motion. Summers to throw. Flushed. Summers will run. Summers. Tap dances out of bounds, but not before he gets into Wilmington territory. At the 49, they may give him the 48. We'll see where they spot it. But again, he has the freedom to do whatever he wants, according to head coach Paul Piccarelli. And I thought it was entertaining when I talked to coach Piccarelli earlier this week, and he said in regards to Colin Summers, God forbid he is injured or something happens. He said, our coaches, including myself, will wave the white flag and surrender. <laughs> well, he's definitely the total package. He showed that here tonight. Second down and three for Sharpsville. Summers calls his own number again, trying to push the pile. He's going to be just a hair shy of a Blue Devil first down. 
You know, you talk of football at any level, you talk about a 300-yard passer, you talk about a 100-yard running back. He has it both here tonight. He's done both. He's thrown for over 300 yards. With that run, I believe, puts him over the 100-yard mark on the ground. Boy, and that's just a complete effort. But he's going to need some more because he has a third down and two looking at him right here. 6.45 on a rolling fourth quarter clock. One point game. Look at the numbers for Colin Summers. Yep, that's pretty impressive to say the least. In motion comes McCullough. Summers again. Another first down inside the 45 yard line and knocked down at the 41 of Wilmington. And keep in mind, he doesn't come off the field, right? He's at middle linebacker for this team on defense making plays on the defensive side of the ball. So when you talk about conditioning, you talk about fatigue, there's a lot of guys out there playing both ways, but man, not many of them throwing for 300, rushing for 100, and making tackles on defense. From the 41 of Wilmington, Sharpsville operates with a one-point lead. Colin Summers. We'll give it to Vigotti, and Vigotti bounces it off the right side. Strong running down to the 37-yard line. I think Sharpsville kind of grinding out because they have to, right? I mean, I think the receivers are tired. The, the passing game is kind of stalled here in the second half. And the best thing about it, if you're a Blue Devil fan, is that clock continues to run. And with a one-point lead, it's certainly your friend. Two timeouts remaining for each side. Summers operating out of the shotgun. Takes the snap and gives it to Vigotti. And Vigotti puts his head down. He's stacked up. He picked up a couple there. And that will set up a third down play. As we're going to slowly make our way inside five minutes to play in this fourth quarter and on third down you know you look at the sharpsville offense they've no they've shown they'll go for it on fourth down no matter what territory they've been on the field so definitely two down territory here So it is third down, upcoming, third and seven. Summers looking to throw, dumps it off. Byerly juggles, makes the catch, and Byerly bounces it to the outside. Byerly back inside, and he's refusing to go down. And he's in for the touchdown. What a play by Byerly. Well, we haven't really seen him except for that touchdown. A few drives back, he's kind of disappeared for a bit, but boy, he comes back in a big way right here. 36-yard touchdown pass, and Byerly made that happen entirely himself. Yeah, just weaving in and out of defenders, tired defenders trying to make arm tackles. And then he just turns it up late. We got guys down on the ground cramping up everywhere, and Byerly's in the end zone. Dalton Byerly, four touchdown receptions on the night and none bigger than that one right here. A strong candidate for tonight's play of the game. My, oh my. Injured Blue Devil down on the field. Josh Myers is making his way off. I think one word sums that play up. Wow. Absolutely. I mean, great individual effort. You know, we've talked so much tonight about Colin Summers and what he's done out there, but boy, I tell you what, Dalton Byerly has been just a big a part of it. That is one for the highlight reel as well. We have a an injured Wilmington player down right inside the 10 yard line. As we're down to 422, there is a very weary Colin Summers. Slowly heading off Chase Mitchell tree. So we're back at it. A 
An extra point here would make it 42-34, keeping it a one-possession game. But we saw how important that missed extra point was for Wilmington. That complicates things a bit. And let's see. The Sharpsville offense is coming out. They're trying to slam the door right here. Summers floats it. End zone incomplete. And so it stays 41-34. They went for the jugular right there. And it's incomplete, so it stays a very manageable 41-34 game. It was intended for Byerly on in coverage from Wilmington. Michael Mistretta. Well, I know everybody's exhausted, but we'll see if they can get some life from that missed opportunity. If Wilmington could take advantage of that. Greyhounds have two timeouts, down seven. Four minutes and some change left to go. Once again, two timeouts per side. Take a look at what they're run there. <laughs> what an impressive looking drive from Sharpsville. They're a quick strike team, but Colin Summers in the middle of all of it again. Getting it done with the wheels and also through the air as well. His leg saves him a couple times on this drive, including Cal Vigotti's legs. But, you know, in the end, it was this little swing pass in the middle. The next thing you know, Dalton Byerly finds himself in the end zone. And you could definitely see the exhaustion factor there on that defensive side of the ball. So Piccarelli will tee the ball up. Miller and Gardner are back deep to return for Wilmington. You know, he showed the coaches showing that play card up in the air. You wonder if it's something special here on this return. It's a line drive kick, which will be picked up by Miller. He's across the 15. Miller tap dances his way across the 20, 25 yard line, across the 25. Short of the 30, near the 28-yard line. And it'll be first down and 10 for Wilmington. Greyhounds with 4-16 with which to work. But they certainly have the home run hitters to make something happen. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Let's check out some scores courtesy of Spitzer Lordstown and North Jackson. At Spitzer, our world revolves around you. Central Valley nips Austin Town Fitch 36-35. Alliance leading Niles... 39-28 in the fourth. Another action. Hubbard defeats Greenville. It is Lakeview over Jefferson. Here it's 41-34. First and 10 from the 27-yard line. Greyhounds keep it to the ground. It's Mitchell Tree. He picked up a big chunk of yardage. A couple other scores to pass along. Lisbon. Knocks off Fairport 14-6, and it was West Branch defeating Woodridge 34-13. All of our scores available, as always, all season long on the WKBN app. You'll find scores, stories, highlights, and the best high school football coverage anywhere bar none. Second and three for the Wilmington Greyhounds. This is Mitchell Tree. Cut down at the 45. He looked like he may have been cramping up just a bit. Yeah, mid-run he looked like yeah. he was cramping up. Still picked up seven yards on the carry. But a good job to change hands through the outer hand and he slowed up. It's ahead to the 46-yard line and a Greyhounds first down. This fourth quarter clock winding down, 3.20 left to play. First down and 10 for the home team, the Greyhounds. Buda Book gives it to Miller. Miller ridden down from behind at the 50. Pickup of four yards. And the Greyhounds continue to grind it out on the ground like we've seen all night here tonight. 
Look at those rushing numbers. 365 total yards on the ground. Buda Buck fakes the handoff. Buck looking to throw. Heaves it downfield and it is dropped. Oh my, Jamie Miller had a chance. But it looked like he had two guys wide open down the field. He throws it to Miller. Has to come back for it a little bit. That'll make it third down and six for Wilmington. 238 left. This has been a heck of a football game in week one in PA. Buda Buck nearly with a huge pass completion now. Greyhounds need six. Buck looks things over. Looks near side to head coach Brandon Fillion. And Book gives to Miller, and he is dropped! Brought down on the play by Will Vogan. That's a huge defensive play, a tackle for loss. And it'll be fourth down and eight. Vogan, the sophomore out there, stays home, doesn't fall for the play fake. Watch him come right there, stay home, doesn't get sucked down in the middle. Makes a great tackle. From the 48-yard line, here we go. The play of the night to this point. And we have a whistle and a timeout taken by Wilmington with 1.59 left to play here in the ball game. 41-34 is our score. Blue Devils with the lead on the WKBN High School Football Game of the Week. Commerce National Bank, rock solid. Football season is here and we're gearing up for another winning season at Fred Martin Ford. You'll be winning too when you save 10% on every new F-150 in stock. Plus, you get a low 1.9% financing. 10% off means you can save as much as $7,500 on your next F-150. America's best-selling truck for the last 46 years. At Fred Martin Ford, everyone is an eligible receiver of great deals because we sell for less, a lot less. When it's time to plan your dream kitchen, trust the industry leader in fine surfaces, BCI Granite. Our service to you begins in our showroom with our selection of granite, engineered quartz, and quartzite, while we educate you on each unique characteristic. We take pride in going above and beyond what's expected. We view our customers as family, and we strive to create something special and stunning for you. BCI Granite. We move mountains for you. Find us on Meridian Road and bcigranite.com. Call Ingram Cassis and Grem when healthcare providers or nursing homes fail to keep your loved ones safe from preventable harm or injuries. You may have grounds for a medical malpractice lawsuit. At ICG Legal, our personal injury attorneys are backed by more than 100 years of combined legal experience and are highly skilled in this complex area of law. We will fight for full compensation. Regardless of your situation, call Ingram Cassis and Grimm today for the strong representation that you deserve. The Honda Store in Boardman would like to wish both teams good luck in tonight's game. Looking for a new car, truck, or SUV? Come to the Honda Store and see why you should be driving a Honda. On to this. 41-34 is our score. Fourth and eight. Wilmington needs to convert. Book fakes the handoff. He's under duress. He throws down. Field and it is caught for a first down. Inside the 35-yard line. Hauled in by Miller. And the drive stays alive. Boy, it shouldn't be a surprise who they go to. The play, the pass, a surprise probably, but on fourth and eight, you have to. But going to Ben Miller, who has been clutch all night for the Greyhounds, shouldn't be a surprise. Comes up with a big catch and extends this drive. First and ten, the line of scrimmage is the 33-yard line. Buda Book under center. Brings a man in motion, and there is a flag that comes from the near side. Flag the flag. Number 10, Sharpsville. Oh, Encroachment so called against Will Vogan of Sharpsville. One timeout remaining for Wilmington.
Doesn't time it correctly and gives him a free five yards. First and five. They mark the ball at the 28-yard line. Mitchell Trey on the right side. Miller comes in motion. They pitch it to Miller. Miller up the field. Blasts his way. He's still on his feet. Rumbling inside the 15-yard line and into the BNR wholesale tire and wheel red zone. Miller continues to be the workhorse for this offense. That offensive line still grinding out there in front of him. And we're down to 121 left. As the plot thickens here in New Wilmington, Pennsylvania, Miller has been a wrecking, one man wrecking crew for the Greyhounds. He really has. We've seen him cramp up tonight, get banged up tonight, but now at crunch time in the fourth quarter, he is still the workhorse for this team. When we get back to it, it'll be first and 10 from the 13-yard line. Miller, over 200 yards rushing. And the injured Sharpsville player is Hayden McFeeters. He's having a hard time putting any weight on his right leg. And now the question is, you have to start thinking ahead. I knew, I knew you were going to ask. Point, yep. Or do you go for two? What do you think? You've got to get in the end zone first. Right. We'll I see think, how aggressive. I, I think with exhaustion, maybe you go for two. If you have a play in your playbook, you really love. Aiden Gardner is in the backfield. They toss it once again to Miller. Miller bouncing off tacklers. And Miller spinning his way. And he's down to the goal line. Kyle Vigotti is going to bring him down. He's going to get banged up in the process. And it'll be first and goal from the one-yard line. But look at Ben Miller continue to go. Certainly the senior running back captain exhausted, but knows how important this game is and knows how important this drive is. So cramping has been a huge issue in this second half. And it's not very hot or humid. It hasn't been all day. But Vigotti will make his way off the field. Sixty nine seconds left. First and goal, Greyhounds. Wilmington trying to punch this one in. Buddha Book up under center. Aiden Gardner behind him. Book calls his own number. And Book trying to push his way in and across. No signal yet from either official. Well, it sure looked like he was over, but they're going to call second down. So second down. And that clock continues to run. 46.7 seconds left. And we have a timeout now taken by Sharpsville. All right, take me inside each coach's mind. What's obviously the approach for Wilmington is to punch it in. Do you go for two here? How aggressive are you in week one? Uh, you know, they say, you know, if you're on the road, you go for two. But I think at home with the way this game is going, the momentum that you have, I think you do it, especially with how Ben Miller has been running the football. Because you really don't know what you have left on the defensive side of the ball. I mean, everybody's exhausted. You know, this is your opportunity to take overtime out of the equation. But again, how aggressive do you want to be? I think for Sharpshow right now, you call this timeout based on just getting these guys some rest. 
And I don't think Wilmington's going to come out here and throw some crazy wrinkle at you. They could make me a liar here in a second, but uh, you know, I think this is just about recovery. It'll be second down and goal. Book has called his own number several times tonight. He's been effective. Into the end zone a couple of times as well. You don't want to take the risk of maybe a, a fumble or something, so he may call his own number again. Trying and, to punch it in. Yeah, he clearly thought he was in on that last one. Will they go back to it? Book with 48 yards rushing and two touchdowns. And Sharpsville's going to slide 76. TJ Locklear right over the nose. So they're going to adjust things on the clock and put 49 seconds on. There's number 76 at 340 pounds. He's saying, hey, if you want to go quarterback sneak up the middle, I'm right here. Book under center. Book trying to get a push from the backside. And he's in! Touchdown! 41-40 is our score. Now it's decision time for Brandon Fillion with 44 and a half seconds left. You know, considering you've already missed an extra point, you, know, you go right back at him. And that's looks what Coach Fillion's going to do. So the offense coming out, it is Book, it is Miller, heading back into the Greyhound huddle. It all comes down to this, 41, 40, 44 and a half seconds left. Book. Brings a man in motion, they give it to Miller, and Miller is in for the two-point conversion! And the Greyhounds take a one-point lead! And boy, how fitting is that, that Ben Miller gets the ball and Ben Miller gets it done. You know, you gotta give credit to those guys up front, Coulter, Serafina, Horkovi, Moore, Buckner. But boy, Ben Miller. When they needed it the most, down 21 nothing, he comes up with the big run. When they needed it the most and get that two-point conversion, he comes up with it. But keep in mind, 44 seconds left. Colin Summers on that other sideline. We're not done just yet. Each side with one timeout remaining, and boy, Miller was not going to be turned away. Boy, Adam Spaulding had a shot on him, but those legs continued to drive. They drove him right into the end zone. Something else to consider. Kickoffs have been an issue all night. Kicking off out of bounds and improving field position. So that's something to consider as well. Well, who, who would have thought at 21-0 this is the game that would have turned into? So the football is teed up. James Winters to kick it away. Twin return men back deep for Sharpsville. Forty-four and a half seconds left. Winters. Puts his foot into it. It's a line drive kick picked up by Byerly. Taken across the 5 to the 10. 15, 20, 25, 30. Byerly vaults the stack and got knocked out of bounds. Danny Leonard pushed him out. 37.2 seconds remaining. The Blue Devils have a big play in them. Well, they've had plenty here tonight, and the majority of the time, they sent it around number five and number 11, Summers to Byerly. Colin Summers operating from behind now, 42-41, Wilmington with the lead. 
Colin Summers pumping once, now throwing long down the left side, and it is caught! Tiptoe in the near sideline! This is Pushkar! Touchdown! Unbelievable! There is a flag down at the other end of the field. We'll have to check that one out. We have players injured. Rough on the passer. Touchdown's good. Beyond the touchdown will indeed count. My, oh my. This is unreal. And it just keeps getting better. That is unbelievable. The pump fake over to Dalton Byerly sucks that defense up and allows Aiden Pushkar to just go deep. Pushkar in Five. for a touchdown. Yeah. But you well, I think everybody thought what we thought. It was going to go to Dalton Byerly. I mean, it had to, right? He's made plays all night. Colin Summers pumps it over to that side and then goes deep and that's unbelievable. An unreal turn of events after Ben Miller gave Wilmington a very brief lead on a two-point conversion. And we're still not done. 25.9 seconds left. Roughing the passer is the call. So the touchdown counts. And the penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. You want to talk about an instant classic, that's what we have here tonight. You know, coming off that game last year, 23-0, really didn't know what to expect here tonight. And we got our money's worth, that's for sure. I imagine you're going to go for two right here. 47-42 is our score. And I think Summers had to come out because he was banged up on that play. And so let's see who lines up at quarterback. They're going to go direct snap to Dalton Byerly, maybe. Now, Byerly is back there along with Vigotti. I think they still need a player out there. There he comes. Late substitutions for both sides. There's a flag. <laughs> Boy, some sloppiness in terms of penalties. That's. Not going to please these two head coaches tonight. Dead ball. Encroachment. Wilmington. Half the distance to the goal. Retry. I'd say it was encroachment. He was five yards behind the play. But that will move things a little bit closer. And I wonder if that gives an opportunity for Colin Summers to come back in the game. We shall soon see. 25.9 seconds remaining. Byerly and Vigotti in the backfield. This is Byerly. Byerly blasts his way in for the two point conversion. And it's 49 42 in favor of Sharpsville. Byerly direct snap right up the middle, runs through some arm tackles. I'm sure they'll talk about it before then, but Thanksgiving dinner just got a lot more interesting. Yes, it did. <laughs> in case you're just joining us, Paul Piccarelli, the head coach of the Sharpsville Blue Devils, is the father-in-law of Wilmington head coach. Brandon Fillion, and he joked and told me earlier in the week, well, if Wilmington wins, he's not welcome for Thanksgiving or Christmas. Well, they'll have a lot to talk about come this holiday season. Probably not tonight, though. No, not tonight. And I imagine maybe a couple years down the road, maybe you could watch this together. But we're still not done. This thing is not in the books just yet. But it's going to be an uphill climb now for Wilmington, who has done the bulk of its damage on the ground. I'm not 
sure what the delay is. But what a turn of events. The ebbs and flows of momentum have been on display here this evening. And just the sway of emotions have just been unbelievable here tonight. You're right. I mean, you get that two-point conversion by Ben Miller, and this place just went crazy. And then about two minutes later, it went crazy the other way. It's just... And not two minutes of the football clock time. Two minutes of real time. Right. Well, the move to kick off up due to the roughing the quarterback penalty that occurred on that scoring play. So the football is teed up by Noah Ashy, and Ashy drills it. It's caught in the end zone for a touchback. So Wilmington has it. One timeout left. What can you do at this stage with just under 26 seconds left? Well, your, your offense here for Wilmington isn't predicated on the long pass game. But I'm sure you have some trick plays in your arsenal. You have something, the hook and ladder, something maybe to continue to pitch the ball down the field. And you have 25 seconds. You have one timeout. But you got a lot of ground to cover. First and ten from the 20-yard line, a thrilling final five minutes of the ball game. Buda Buck will try to orchestrate a potential game-tying drive. Miller comes in motion, now lined up as a wide receiver. Book looking to throw. Book steps up, he heaves it downfield, and it's incomplete. Down to 20.7 seconds left. Sharpsville with one, two, three, four, five defensive backs. Not allowing any kind of deep ball. And it's second down and 10. If you're Wilmington, that's what you have to do. You have maybe hope for a, a pass interference penalty, something to move the ball a little bit closer. But your bread and butter hand the ball off to Ben Miller is it going to work for you right here not at all second and 10 from the 20 Miller lined up as a wide receiver near side to the right this is book book stepping up gives it the heave down field incomplete third and 10 with 15 seconds left pass intended for Freddie Zahentner well, it was awfully close down the sideline. Boy, that was tough. That was right off the fingertips. So Book, who hasn't thrown the ball a lot tonight, puts it right on the money. Got some more cramping issues here, it looks like. So it'll be third and ten. Time running out now for Wilmington. Buda Book has the play call. 15 seconds left. Aiden Gardner is in the backfield. Buda Book looking to throw. He pumps, he rolls. He gives it the heave, and it is tipped, and it is intercepted by Byerly. Byerly has it to the 35. Byerly spins back, reverses his tracks as the clock hits zero, and Sharpsville wins an instant classic in week one by a final score of 49 to 42. What a ball game here on high school football's biggest stage. Boy, and Dalton Bradley, who's made so many plays on the offensive end, comes up big there at the end of the game and smart enough to get to the ground when that clock ran out. Final score, 49-42, Sharpsville over Wilmington. We'll visit with our player of the game when we come back on the WKBN High School Football Game of the Week. These furniture, appliances, and mattresses, the best things in life happen at home. 
for heating, cooling, and indoor air quality. The Mahoney Valley trusts MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning, offering worry-free repair, service, and installation. Call MP Vivo today for a free estimate. MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning. We're your energy efficient experts. You have a bunch of help around you always. You have floaters, you have supervisors, you have your manager, always hands-on with you. I love this job. Find new roads to savings at the Stadium Superstore, the only place where you'll find every GM brand. Chevy, Buick, GMC, and Cadillac all under one roof. Visit StadiumGM.com right now. Search through our massive new and used car inventory and find the perfect make and model to fit your needs. Value your trade and get pre-approved online. You'll find out why nobody beats a stadium deal. We offer pickup and delivery for service as well. It's the Stadium Superstore at StadiumGM.com. Welcome to your future at Newcastle School of Trades. Experienced instructors, modern facilities, in-demand careers. It's the first school I ever like felt really welcomed at. When I enrolled, it was maybe the best decision I've ever made. I wasn't nervous about any job because I knew that I had my education at least to back me up. I found Newcastle School of Trades. It's been a blessing ever since. Begin your career now at Newcastle School of Trades. At BIOS Wellness Urgent Care in Youngstown, we offer more than you would expect from an urgent care center. We provide physical health care, sports and pre-employment physicals, and all your back-to-school wellness needs, as well as treating urgent mental health and substance abuse issues. Our registration is almost completely contactless with online scheduling, forms, co-pays, and much more. Walk-ins are always welcome, even for rapid and antibody COVID-19 testing. Fast and friendly service for all of your health needs. Visit BIOS Wellness Urgent Care. Local obituaries and calling hours from our four counties. You can see them all at MyValleyTributes.com. Easy to read, easy to search. Get them on your computer or even on your phone. MyValleyTributes.com for heating, cooling, and indoor air quality. The Mahoney Valley trusts MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning, offering worry-free repair, service, and installation. Call MP Vivo today for a free estimate. MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning. We're your energy efficient experts. What a ball game it was here tonight. Wilmington rallying late, only to be turned away by Sharpsville, who scores a late touchdown. Sharpsville a winner in thrilling fashion over Wilmington by a final score of 49 to 42. Hi again, everybody. Chad Krispinski back with you. It is time to select our player of the game. Our player of the game award is brought to you by Nightline Embroidery and Screen Printing and Stadium GM. Tonight's player of the game, senior quarterback for Sharpsville, Colin Summers, 411 passing yards, seven passing touchdowns, leading the way. Colin, congratulations on a tremendous performance here tonight. How are you feeling right now after that one? We'll catch up with Colin here in just a second, but a tremendous performance all around. This is a ball game that had Colin Summers helping Sharpsville build up a 21-0 lead. And then it was Wilmington rallying back, making this a football game. And when it was all said and done, it was Sharpsville coming away with the victory in the end by seven by a final score of 49-42. to We will take another timeout. Before we do that, we will select our play of the game. Our play of the game is brought to you by our friends at Stadium GM. Tonight's play of the game, well, it certainly couldn't go wrong with uh, selecting this one. It was a huge touchdown pass in the final second. Summers going to work. The pump fake, the old heave, and then Aiden Pushkard does the rest. Tiptoe on the sideline, slicing it back across the way, and he's in for the touchdown. That is our play of the game. We will take a timeout and bring you back for more after this on the WKBN High School Football Game of the Week. Bombers National Bank, rock solid. Toyota of Warren knows that the best new cars make the best used cars. All of our certified used vehicles come with a comprehensive warranty, roadside assistance, vehicle history report, and more. How's that for peace of mind? View our complete certified used inventory today at toyotaofwarren.com. 
attention high school sophomores. Now is the time to enroll at the Mahoning County Career and Technical Center. At MCCTC, we do things differently. We approach learning in the new school, hands-on, real-world way so that you are prepared not just for the jobs of today, but for the jobs of the future. We inspire innovation and collaboration in our more than 20 high-tech labs. Visit MahoningCTC.com and book a tour with me today. We can't wait to meet you. Hey, Dad. Check out my new phone. Wow, pretty cool. Directions to Rosati's Custard. Here's what I found. Starting route to Rosati's Frozen Custard. <sighs> All right, here we go. So, see? Got you again. <laughs> That's good stuff. Very good. Yeah. You deserve to get the name brand tire you're looking for. Here at BNR, we sell all major brand tires that will beat any local price or I'll buy you dinner. BNR Wholesale Tire. We know about the money you BNR Wholesale Tire and Wheel is your off road tire headquarters stocking all tread designs. We beat any price or we'll buy you dinner. HBCU football is back and falling on HBCU Go. Here's that quarterback in trouble. Let's it go. Oh, the other way. Oh, man. Into the end zone. Touchdown. Wide open. Central State takes on Mississippi Valley State in the Chicago Football Classic. Saturday, September 2nd at 4, 3 Central. Saturday at 4 on MyYTV. Toyota of Warren knows that the best new cars make the best used cars. All of our certified used vehicles come with a comprehensive warranty, roadside assistance, vehicle history report, and more. How's that for peace of mind? View our complete certified used inventory today at toyotaofwarren.com. What a ball game it was. Sharpsville topping Wilmington in thrilling fashion by a final score of 49 to 42. Sharpsville starts the season 1 and 0. Wilmington 0 and 1. Sharpsville will now tangle with Titusville in week number two. Wilmington will hit the road to Greenville. So that's the story from here in New Wilmington. We hope you enjoyed this presentation of the WKBN High School Football Game of the Week. Congratulations to our player of the game, Colin Summers, who tossed for 411 passing yards and seven touchdowns as Sharpsville comes away with a 49-42 victory. So for my broadcast partner, Ralph Sandy, and all of us at WKBN, my name is Chad Perspinski telling you once again the final score, Sharpsville 49, Wilmington 42. Till next time, so long, everybody. Hi everyone, I'm Lindsay Watson. Thanks for watching the WKBN 27 First News YouTube channel. If you want more video news, subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the WKBN 27 First News app for breaking news alerts.